Hi guys, Danielle here from Boomer Benefits, and in today's interview, I'll be speaking with Josh Scanlon from Heritage Wealth Planning. Josh has a channel here on YouTube that covers retirement topics from a different angle than I've ever seen before. I suspect that the reason that his videos are popular is he talks about how people can survive retirement on less money than they originally expected. Josh believes in reality retirement planning, and you'll see exactly what he means by that in this interview. Josh is going to tell you why he believes that you can retire comfortably on less money than you think. He'll also cover what your biggest retirement expense will be and how you can avoid the hidden tax bomb inside your retirement. Furthermore, Josh loves the idea of using your early retirement years to finally earn money doing what you truly love to do and why you should absolutely consider quitting your crappy old job to launch an encore career. He'll also appreciate his advice on determining the right amount of money you'll need to make ends meet each month in retirement and what to invest in if you're just starting to save for retirement at age 55. So much interesting material in this interview, so hopefully you can benefit from the whole new perspective that Josh brings to the table when it comes to looking at your retirement. Without further ado, let's dive into this interview with Josh Scanlon. Good morning, Josh. I'm so glad that you're here to talk with us today about heritage wealth planning. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Well, thanks, Danielle. Welcome to the great state of Georgia. Beautiful but crisp <laughs> day out here in April 1st. April Fools. That's right. Absolutely. What's going on in the great state of Texas? So hot? You know, I was wishing that it would be hot this weekend, <laughs> and we actually had a cool front come through. So it was just cool enough that I couldn't sit in the backyard and, and enjoy the sunshine without a jacket. But I'm not going to complain because in a couple of months when it's 110. Yes. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to jinx myself and, and uh, predict a hot summer here for Texas. Well, I just put some seedlings out, and I hope that they survived last night because it did get uh, to about 32 degrees. So, uh, wow, that was Garden, it. man, you always think <laughs> it's always a concern when you're planting your seedlings at first. If, uh, yeah. So we'll shield, we shall see. Good. Well, I hope they turn out I okay. Being here. I appreciate you having me, and I absolutely look forward to uh, – to talk new about Medicare stuff uh, at some point in the near future as well. So be a, I'm stoked for my audience and I'm uh, to listen to your expertise on that indeed. Yeah. So I was just noticing how many videos that you put out, like you really have just a ton of content. So can you tell us a little bit about kind of your background in finance and what you've been doing and what led you into um, putting out so much education here on YouTube? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So my background uh, is uh, as a, uh, Poor kid, grew up in the state of Maine in uh, an island, small island off the coast of Portland, Maine, and and uh, you know on food stamps uh, when you didn't have heat in your home in the wintertime, you, know, you had to go stay with neighbors and all stuff. Uh, so being poor is something I've always despised. I uh, can't stand it, and uh, we used to have to take a boat back and forth to school uh, in Portland and whatnot. So um, it, not a, it was a, a wonderful life living on an island, but being poor sucks, man. No other way around that. I just uh, I remember you know, thinking that there's got to be a better way than this. And, uh, and, and there is, and it's just through due diligence, you know, taking your time to, to learn, uh, not get rich quick schemes, but just, you know, structure, you know what I mean? Just planning, uh, making things happen and a work ethic. I've always had a work ethic. I don't know why, uh, but I, I almost failed out of high school. I, I, I was shocked to have graduated because I hated school, still hate school. And what Mark Twain says, uh, don't let school get in the way of your learning. And, uh, I hate it. I always have, and uh, but I did graduate on the by the you know skin of my teeth, and I went in the army uh, for four years in the infantry. And, and as most young men will attest to, you go in the military it allows you to mature because men are young men are usually not as mature as their their women counterparts. And so for me, it's just a godsend. And, uh, and so I got out of the army and I went to college. And but lo and behold, I just I uh, never talked to this guy. I mean, I've had so many different jobs, Danielle, just grunt work and stuff. And you know, I was in the infantry, so I wasn't afraid of hard work. But never get to talk to this guy. His brother had hired us to put up these real estate signs in Fairfax, Virginia, and he had to do it kind of under the cover of darkness because it's literally illegal. So he punched down a, a little sign in the ground that said, you know, KB homes for sale over here, and you had to do it at night because the cops would, you know, basically give you a ticket and, and you know, not arrest you for doing. Hey, long story short, so it was, it was fun, it was, it was profitable, but I just remember talking to him, and one night, you know, it was were <laughs> literally covert operation. He was, he was talking <laughs> about mutual funds. I said, what the hell is that? I had no idea what a mutual fund was, and he started talking about it. I said, really? And so, uh, I, you know, I was, I was in college already at that point, and I said, that sounds pretty interesting. And so I've kind of since took it upon myself to, uh, to learn about investing and, and uh, 
And then I realized uh, for, you know, after many years of being a financial planner, but really an investment advisor, not knowing anything about financial planning, uh, how much I did not know. And mm. so I said, you know, I, uh, I went to get the CFP. I got that. I started the studies for that in 2001 and I got it in 2005, I believe. Um, and that was fine, but that didn't, that wasn't what made me a, a better financial planner. I mean, it was, it was okay, uh, but it was actually getting a master's degree from the College of Financial Planning. That was by far and away, by far and away, the best education I've ever had when it comes wow. to planning. So that was in 2009 and 10. And, uh, and so I've been, since then, I've been uh, just a financial planner, not an investment management guy. And that's okay. what I like. Yeah, awesome. That's the story. Well, you know, when it comes to financial planning, I think a lot of the clients that I run into here, especially some of the ones that are helping their parents age into yeah. Medicare, you know, they're sort of overwhelmed by the whole concept of yeah. planning. Yeah. And I'm always happy to meet adult children like that because they're an opportunity for me to explain to them, hey, you have time still. Watch what's going on with your mom. Medicare isn't free. And when yeah. you have it, it doesn't pay for 100% of everything. And I'm, I'm like trying to, you know, information dump all the things they need to prepare for because yeah. we need so many people coming into Medicare at 65 who are going to be like on Social Security alone. Yep. And that's really devastating. So what do you think are the most confusing topics out there for people as they get ready to retire? Let's say, you know, in their early 50s up until age 65, you know, why is it so confusing? And what are the topics when you're talking to people that, that are so important to break down into easy pieces? Um, well, the first thing, Danielle, that, and I know it's a family show that, but it pisses me off is that <laughs> we have this uh, in the vernacular that you can't retire, like Susie Orman, and what the, she's sitting there saying, you need $10 million to retire. And it's just this freaking nuts, man. I sit there and all these people out there, and then we have this fidelity study that they use every year that you need $286,000 for medical, yeah. medical and that doesn't include long-term care. They have all these, all these just, just worry words, negative Nellies out there telling people they can't retire. And it just, it ticks me off because it's simply <laughs> it's, it's the facade. Bankruptcies, half of bankruptcies are not caused by health insurance, the lack of health care, of the health care is not. I mean, the stuff that's out there is completely fake, is completely facade. Okay. The Fidelity study, which says, and it's true when they look at Medicare B and D and then you look at Medigap, that you're going to spend $286,000 for a couple and your health costs in retirement. Well, how much are you going to spend on food? How much are you going to spend on housing? Because housing yeah. is by far and away, Daniel. Nothing comes close. Nothing comes not anywhere near the cost of housing by far and away. You yeah, and so many of them renting these days. I, I read that too recently that a lot of times um, they're, they don't have a mortgage paid off. And so they're heading into rent and they're going to be paying that kind of rent all through the retirement. So it's guilt really expensive. Well, even if you had your mortgage paid off, I mean, your property taxes don't go away, your maintenance yeah. doesn't go away, your utilities don't go away. And so the thing that just frustrates, and I actually uh, commissioned a survey on Google. If you ever go to Google, they can do a survey for like 200 bucks. I asked them to ask 1,500 people what they think their biggest expense is or will be in retirement. And I gave them five choices. The top five from the BLS, which is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They have this thing called the Consumer Expenditure Survey, CES. And, and the number one is without a question, 36 to 37% of your expenditures in retirement will be on housing. Wow. And everything else of the bottom four, and that's healthcare, that's food, that's transportation, that's entertainment, all the other stuff is uh is within you know 10 to 15 percent and so they're all kind of jockeying for position number two uh as you age but anyway it, it, in every single uh, 70 80 percent of the people said health care will be their biggest expense in retirement it's yeah. simply not true it's just not now will there be somebody as an outlier yes one of my dearest friends her mom is in a nursing home in harrisonburg virginia for eight thousand bucks a month yes wow. i get that which is why i have long-term care because it's it's a catastrophic issue which is exactly what insurance should be used for mm. to cover catastrophic illnesses but that doesn't happen very much it just does not and just because we have anecdotal evidence like i knew someone who knew somebody who knew somebody that doesn't mean it's likely to happen to you and so a lot of these people put on hold the enjoyment of their lives because they're so yeah. worried about about leaving that crappy old job which is what i call it because they're, they're just worried and it just it infuriates me because I, I, as a christian we are put on this earth uh to bring good cheer to bring the good news and when you're always worried about things you inherently limits your ability to do that and there's no reason for that because the numbers are so clear anyway that's my that's my <laughs> diatribe 
<laughs> That's good though. That's really good because um, we do find people afraid to head into retirement. And, and, and you know, in today's world, yep. we have so many people working well past 65 yeah. and they can because it's an internet-based world rather than a manual labor type of world. But, um, you know, they still, they still want to retire. You know, everyone yes. looks forward to that. And so one of the things I noticed when looking at your videos on your YouTube channel is that you had um, you know, different amounts of savings and how people could retire on there. So um, one of them was, you know, can you retire on just 300,000 yeah. in savings? So tell us a little more about surviving retirement, if even if you don't have a fortune put away today. Yeah. Well, the first thing we have to, let me get my little thing here. So I want to show you something that I think um, a lot of people and a lot of financial planners will do this uh, I hate to say uh, deliberately because that'd make it seem nefarious and I don't necessarily think it is. I think a lot of financial planners are just not truly students of the business. And so what they'll think is they'll say, Hey, you need 50 K a year to retire. And that expenditure will go up each and every year as you age. And there's okay. just, there is no evidence of that whatsoever. None whatsoever. The BLS again, Bureau of Labor Statistics. I mean, at this stage nowadays is so well known in the academic cycles that most people, what will happen is they'll go kind of like this. Uh, their initial spending will probably go up in the first couple of years, but then it'll drop precipitously as you age. And, okay. and a lot of people say, well, that's because they're being forced to, and there's no evidence in that, none whatsoever. I mean, there could be a, 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 there's definitely some people who are forced to spend less because they ran out of money, but you can't, there's no, we don't have empirical evidence to state that you spend mo less money because you, Rank because you uh, you have nothing left. We just don't have the evidence to, to support mm. that assertion. There's a guy, and I'll tell you right now, there's a guy, and I, I, I wish this guy, I try to get an interview with me, but he, I'm, I'm sure he's just inundated, but this guy named Ty Bernicki, and he wrote this article in the Journal for Financial Planning in 2005, which for me was, it just changed everything, where he used the numbers from the BLS and the Consumer Expenditure Survey, and he's called it re reality retirement planning. And what that meant is, if this is true, uh, which it really is. Uh, we have evidence of this. Uh, it's through the roof. It's not really debatable now. What are we doing? What are we telling people that they got to save instead for people to save with their expenditures that go up? That means essentially we're telling people to save too much. That means we're telling people to work too much longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's a, a professor at a Boston University named Barry, uh, Larry Kotlikoff, who's who's written a ton of stuff on Social Security. I mean, he's like the expert on it. And he has this idea of what's called consumption spending. So basically what it is, is like, hey, man, when you hit retirement age, like give you an example, Daniel, I got four kids. Uh, for the longest time, my wife stayed home. We had one income, four kids. All right. So at the end of the day, are we going to spend the same in retirement as we do today? And the answer is inherently no. We're not going to spend yeah. anywhere near. We got four sets of braces, four sets of glasses, four <laughs> sets of sports, all this stuff. We're just not going to consume the same amount that we do now. And so- for us to think that when we hit retirement, if we're spending $100,000 with a family of six in a big house that uses oh, freaking 55 kilowatt hours a day in electricity, it's just, it's not going to happen. Okay. So what Larry Kotlikoff will say is, you know, if you smooth your consumption relative to the reality on the ground, you can quickly see how something like this makes sense. It's just intuitive, but because yeah. we're so fear mongering, uh, the, the industry as a whole, which has an incentive to get you to invest your money so they can get paid on it just won't share that. And it's, uh, it's yeah. just fine. You know, um, that really brings up a good point for me because my parents are 70 ish. Um, yeah. And my I know my mom, she worked a couple of years past age 65. And then even after she's retired now, um, she barely draws from her, um, her financial accounts. And so yeah. I tell her, like, you've done such a good job putting away all this money and, and you're trying to live on beans. Like, you, you need to meet with your financial planner and decide how much you're going to pull out every year and use some of that to make your retirement easier, mom. And she still has this mentality that yep. she needs to have this chunk of money set aside uh, for us. And, you know, we're, my brother and I are successful business owners. We definitely don't need her money whatsoever. We told her this on many occasions. Um, but there's this, this sense of holding it, being afraid yeah. to let go of that pot of money. Whereas, you know, I want to see her you know, she, she worked so hard putting all that money away. I want her to take some of it every year yeah. and be able to enjoy the types of thing in, in retirement, like, you know, travel and gardening and some of the things that she really yes. enjoys, but exactly. um, people are afraid to let it go. 
Well, we have evidence of that. Actually, uh, uh, we have what's called behavioral finance, which a guy named Richard Thaler won a Nobel Prize for. We got another guy, uh, Daniel Kahneman, who also won a Nobel Prize for this kind of thing, that people have this chunk of money that they're very hesitant to tap into that principle. They'll take the income from it, but they really get nervous when they're tapping into the principle. Yes. They don't need it. So if your mom, would I, is she married or is she, or is she widow? She is. She's married. Okay, so here's the issue. I'm just telling you right now, and I wrote a book on this and a shameless sales plug, but- <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> where is it? Uh, all right here. The Tax Bomb in Your Retirement Account, all of 85 pages. It's uh, <laughs> Get it right now. I think it's know, 10 bucks or I can't remember what I'm selling for. The issue is that she have, is gonna have is, if she really wants to leave it to you and not to the IRS, what's happening is she's, she's avoiding taking advantage of her married file and jointly tax status. Mm -hmm. and what happens now is, and I have a chapter three, is a widow's tax trap. Because the minute one of those spouses dies, your mom still has required minimum distributions, but now she no uh. longer has two standard deductions to take. And on top of that, it's gonna make her tax brackets go up. And on top of that, it'll put her social security subject to tax, her dividend. All, I mean, I'm telling you, it's never mind the Medicare stuff. Like, yeah. oh my. So I, I just, I, I see these, these couples in retirement who have done such a good job of saving and they're just wonderful salt of the earth people. And they've been told they need to defer. Don't take money out of your IRA. Mm -hmm. Your mom should, should still be doing that. And she doesn't have to spend it. She can take it out of the IRA and at least put it into a side yeah. account. Pay the taxes now. And that way, when you, uh, when she and your your pops or her husband die, at least you all inherit that tax free because of the step up in basis. And I just, so many people don't do that. They think they're doing it right, and what they're truly doing is they're leaving the surviving spouse a tax bomb, thus the tax bomb <laughs> account. But then they're leaving you and your brother a tax bomb too, because you'll inherit that money and have to pay tax on it. It's just. Yeah. Sad, but wow. That's a knowledge bomb right there. I'm going to make her watch this video as soon as I put it out. No, <laughs> that, we, I, mean, I, I, I got a, a research funny. paper I got right there in my window, my tab right there, talking about the propensity to spend dividends and not capital. It's, I mean, it's academic research is through the roof on this. It's, you know, inherently it doesn't make sense. You're like, why does it matter? But it does make sense. People say, if I dip into my principal, that's scary because I can never get that money back necessarily. So I just yeah. assume live on beans and take the income. And even if I have this big fat principal, which is a, uh, which is exactly just human age. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Well, and now they have a good reason to think that, think of that twice. So that's yeah. one mistake. What are some of the other common mistakes that you see people make in financial planning today? Uh, but first and foremost, I think a lot of people assume retirement means not getting an income. And I, I don't agree with that at all. I, yeah. I think retiring just leaves, means you're leaving your crappy old job to do something else, something that you like. Like, for instance, I left my crappy old job where I was making big money to do this thing at YouTube. Uh, and I enjoyed immensely. Am I making anywhere near where I was? No, but I love it. And, and you know, who, who knows? At some point, maybe it will pay me uh, what I need, which isn't what I was making before. And I'm yeah. comfortable with that. So, you know, let's just say going back to gardening, you want to raise some, I mean, shoot, you just, you want to raise some asparagus and you, you think you're going to stay in your home for 15 years. You got these asparagus plants, which are perennials and can grow for many, many years. And you have neighbors or even go start. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can do classes at the library, show people. Maybe they pay you 25 bucks. Do a YouTube channel. There's a guy out in the Houston named Kang Starr who does a YouTube channel on just raids and stuff. And he's making money. I mean, I, just do anything. It doesn't mean you're sitting there just smoking cigarettes and drinking martinis. At retirement. <laughs> retirement, who wants to do that? I mean, I, you're put on this earth to do something, to bring the good news. And the good news, whatever it is for you, doesn't mean just sit back and, and sit idle. In fact, I can tell you, you probably can do this even better than me. Men in particular, they, they leave their, their crappy old jobs at 62. They think they're going to go play golf, and then they play golf so much that they get bored. And what happens yeah. is when they get bored, they start watching Fox News or MSNBC, start watch, watching the stock channels, and they start getting bitter. I'm telling you, I've seen it happen a million times. They start getting bitter because they're bored. They don't know what to do with themselves. And uh, that, So before you retire, start – thinking about what it is that you might want to do as a side hustle. It doesn't even have to be where you're making money, but just because you're retired doesn't mean you're not working necessarily. That's a big one. I, I wish people would recognize that retiring, just in my opinion, the way it should be nowadays is leaving what you didn't want to do. Yeah. To do something you did want to do. And Don't I, have an, yeah. an encore career and something that you really oh, enjoy. 100%. You ever heard of Rick Edelman by chance? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, he's a big finance. He's, I think, one of the top three or four uh, registered investment advisors around in the, in the 
in the world. Okay. And he had, had and I, I'm somewhat a fan of Rick. He, he's a good guy. It, it's somewhat, he kind of grates on me a little bit, but uh, he had a, a discussion I thought was pretty interesting. He says people will have, the way we're living longer with longevity expanding, we're going to have three to four re- careers in the course of a life. Yeah. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but I think there's some legitimacy to the idea that what you're doing today isn't necessarily what you can be doing 20, 30 years from now. So don't just get stuck in, you know, I'm a welder, I'm going to do welding for the rest of my life, or I'm an accountant, I'm going to do accounting for the rest of my life. Find something that, that motivates you. That gets you just gets the juices flowing, and man, I'm telling you, it'll change everything. It really will. Yeah, and I think that's important too because I know I follow a lot of financial planning podcasts and things like that, and people get into this mindset of, you know, they've got a budget, they have, they have a, a spending problem or a budgeting problem, and sometimes it's really an income problem. Oh, and absolutely. so, you know, you can earn even if you're on Social Security, you absolutely. can earn up to a certain amount each year before they're going to tax that. Um, and even if they do, there might be some things like you said that you just really enjoy that would make it worth that. Um, we have a, a post on our website about 50 ingenious ways to make money once you retire. And yeah, when we I were putting that. the post together, I remember being surprised myself even at how many opportunities there were. Yeah. Um, you know, especially we have the things like Uber and Lyft and, you know, easy driving things that you can do, but you can pet sit from your house. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts of different little part-time things that you can do. So if you don't have something that's a burning passion that you can make money on, but you can make just enough that you keep that principle up or that you're not worrying so much about the money that you're taking out, we do live in a world where you can, you can make money right here on the internet and you can, uh, you can find other things that you can do that would just earn enough on the side to help you have the funds you need for day-to-day living. I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, three or 400 bucks a month is a long-term care insurance premium. You, you see bet. what I'm saying? I mean, that's literally, that, that's not chump change. It's not. Yeah. And if you can get that by doing something you enjoy as well, that's not, but then I, the, the, the answer, the question I can hear people saying, but I, I, I can't afford it now. Uh, have you actually done the budgeting? And this is going back to your initial question about some of the things that frustrate my financial planning. We always start with how much do you have? And, let's, and we'll, if you have a million bucks, we'll take $40,000 a year out. And I said, no, no, no. We got to start with how much do you need? How much do you need of income? All right. Because what we find is that I'm just telling you, man, the many, 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 many people in, America, in the United States don't need nearly what they think they do. Yeah. And we know this. How do we know this? Because a median household income in the U.S. is $60,000. That means 50% of the people make more, 50% of the people make less. So the median household income is $60,000. You take out FICA, 7.65. You take out your taxes to the state, if you're in Texas and Georgia, and then in the, in the feds, that's probably another 12%. And then you take out uh, your 401k contributions. Mm-hmm. After all that, you're only needing $50,000 a year to maintain the same income that you had before. And I, I just, I, I'm telling you, man, I can tell you, Daniel, how many times I've talked to people. I said, how much do you think you need? And they're like, well, and I said, think 5000 <laughs> a month would do you right? And that's including Medicare B and D and the Medigap. And they said, yeah, it is. I said, okay, so if we can generate $5,000 a month, we're going to be in a pretty good place. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's go back to that. And now we, we back in social security at your primary insurance amount. And we know it's so easy to do this. Now we say, okay, we need $50,000 a year, which is, you know, $4,000 a month, roughly. You're going to get 2,500 a year from social security. If you take out your full retirement age and let's just use myself, for example, my wife will get half that. So that's 2,500 mm-hmm. plus my her 1250. That's thirty-seven fifty a year right there, and if my trusty calculator is correct, thirty-seven fifty a month right there, uh, that would give us uh, forty-five thousand dollars a year in Social Security. And so, yeah, so that gap much, really might not be as big as you think it is. No, and people say, "Well, Social Security is going bankrupt." It's not. It's, I literally just did a video on this yesterday <laughs> where we thought we dove into every single aspect of the trustees' report to show how silly it is. The idea is, is, is not going bankrupt. Even in 2034, they got enough coming in. All right, now the print, the, their, their capital base is gone. I get that, but they still have enough coming in from payroll taxes to pay 79 cents on the dollar. Okay. I haven't done anything, and that will be that, that until 2092. And that's the worst case scenario um, with Social Security. It's just not going bankrupt. And so not to use Social Security as part of your planning, just stupid. I hate to say it's dumb. You should because it's there. Yeah, you should. And, you know, the thing is you want to have it not be the only thing. It shouldn't be the only thing that you have, but it doesn't, it also isn't something that you want to just discount when you're putting together how much you're going to need to retire. So if you, uh, 
a question for you. If you had somebody, let's say they're 55 or 60, and now the kids have all gone through college yeah. and they're starting out flat. They don't have any debt, or maybe they've got a little debt that they're working on paying off, but now they're 55 or 60 and they're just starting to put money away. Yeah. What type of, um, what type of, rec what would you recommend for someone? Cause I, I think we have a lot of people in that boat where okay. like yourself, they have four kids and you know, they do their best. They work through maybe, maybe both of them are working, but they might be in, you know, jobs that are hourly pay. And we have a lot of families in that situation today. So if you were 55 yeah. or 60 and you're just now starting to put money away from your retire free retirement, what things would you have that someone in that situation consider or work on? And, and we have little to no debt. Yeah, let's say the debt is, let's just say no debt. Maybe they're, oh, nice. you know, they don't have a ton put away, but they also have managed not to rack up a ton of debt. All right, so the, uh, so let me just uh, touch on that real briefly, though. I'm telling you, the most important thing you can do in retirement is not have debt, I, yeah. without question. So with, with let's just say I someone agree. has $100,000 uh, mortgage and they don't have anything put away, should they invest or pay off the mortgage? Pay off the mortgage. I'm telling you right now, okay. pay off the freaking mortgage. And the reason for that is simple because you're not getting a tax deduction anymore. The, st the standard deduction is so high. Uh, the, the interest write off on a hundred thousand dollar mortgage payment is not enough to get you above the standard. It's just not. So you're not getting okay. a tax. Deduction. That's a great tip. Uh, people say, if I need the tax deduction, I say, are you even getting it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Have you looked at your 1040? Uh, okay. So they're just not. And so yeah. what happens, I say to those people, you got to pay off their mortgage. Now, if I may too, Let's, now let's say the mortgage is paid off and, and they, they have a 401k or they have a 403b or they have a TSB or something where their employer is also contributing. Okay. Well, you got to take advantage of that. I mean, that's, yeah. that's par for the course. And you got to invest that as aggressively as you possibly can. And that'd be like a total stock index fund or something like that, Daniel. Okay. Just something simple. Get the yeah. broad market coverage and don't sweat it. And it, but here's why is because if you look at your your labor, your labor is a bond, if that makes sense, right? Your labor, you're renting your labor to a company to pay you an interest rate, which is exactly how a bond works. So I'm working for Joe Schmo's, you know, electricity company, and Joe Schmo is paying me ten thousand uh, dollars, whatever, hundred thousand bucks a year, whatever. Okay. That is a bond, and so we don't want to be a, a conservative. Because we already have our bond covered in our labor. Mm. And our social security is another bond. So we have the bond side covered. We've got to get some equity, some stocks. And not because stocks are great, because they'll outperform or anything. It's because of diversification. Okay. Stocks are the only way we're going to make any money in the, in the future. And that, there's no guarantee of that at all. But if you look at social security and your labor as the bonds, you've already met that component paid. Uh, and then you got your home paid off as well. So I just think you gotta be aggressive and just, you can't, I, look, I have no idea what the market is doing. I paid no attention at all because I just don't care. Yeah. But, and that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Okay. I love that perspective because I do think we, we tend to get a little older and then we're, we're more conservative. You know, we don't want to put as much money in, but if you've limited, if you have a limited time horizon yes. and you haven't saved up until now, thinking about social security and your job as your bond yeah. might make you just relax a little bit and put some money into stocks where you do have the capability to earn those bigger returns because your time horizon is so short. Um, it's almost a, almost an opposite approach, but totally interesting. But no, that's, I mean, I, I, so I have a video called the two bucket retirement plan where you have basically three years of cash, literally in CDs and everything else is in stocks. I, I don't advocate any bonds whatsoever. And going back to Dave Ramsey, uh, I would agree with him on that. He's not a fan of bonds either. And, and so and the reason again for that is because you already have big bonds I and mean, you got a bond in social security, your home, you can downsize, you can take a reverse mortgage. There's all kinds of different things you can do with your home to mm -hmm. generate cash flow from that, which a lot of people don't do. And I, I don't get that at all. Uh, but either way, three years of cash, and you can ladder CDs, one, two, three C year CDs, and then the rest in stocks. And that's that's the portfolio you should do as you hit retirement. Okay. Obviously, okay. I would rather have you retire with a billion dollars than a hundred thousand. But man, you can easily, easily get by just fine on a hundred thousand dollars as long as you know how to main, uh, manipulate the social security systems to benefit, which isn't really that difficult. It really just means don't take it early. I mean, there's no other way around. Yeah. That. Yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, you can lose quite a bit uh, oh. by taking it early. And I think, you know, I hear from people all the time, they say, well, you know, I, I might die tomorrow. Well, you know, statistically, that's not the case. So <laughs> well, um, Daniel, it's not always say a good the, idea. They'll say their average life expectancy is 78. I said your average life expectancy is not 78. It's 78 if you're a newborn today. 
Yeah. 65 years old today is not 78. There's a 50% chance a couple today at 65 will survive one of them till they're 92. Yeah. And so everyone thinks life expectancy is 78. So if I take it at 62, uh, that'll be better than if I take it at 66, my full retirement age. And it's simply not true. 78 is not the life expectancy for someone that is looking at Medicare. It's just not. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't, you've, you really got to think about that for the long term. And sometimes we want to ha- sort of have the bird in the hand. But oh. it, when you're talking about the difference between 70% of your full retirement age or 124%, that's a really big gap. So, oh, and if you're working question. anyway, and you don't need the money, yeah. if you, that happens to you, um, I think you've got to, like you say, wait as long as possible. Well, such great information, Josh. I would love chatting with you because this perspective, I think, is what so many people need to hear when they feel fearful or, or sometimes we have this comparison mindset where, you know, oh, I've got these neighbors over here and they've just put away all this money for retirement and I'm starting so late. Why would I bother? And the answer is that, you know, the time to start is today. Today is the time. Yep. You've got five years, 10 years, three years, whatever you can do to help yourself out get out there and do it now while you still have some time the past is you can't do anything about the past you can't take the future but you can do something about today and that's pay off your debt start saving money and then stop earning so much about it. it's just it doesn't make sense to go through life worried about social security or whoever is in the administration or it just doesn't make sense just yeah. recognize yeah. that you can control you what you do and what you do today should be to advance the ball forward to live the life that you're put on this earth to do, which is to bring cheer and goodwill. Yes. The worry is the antithesis of that, that's for sure. I totally agree. So where can people find out more about you? Uh, so they got my YouTube channel is uh, just youtube.com backslash heritage wealth planning, heritage wealth planning. And uh, I do probably three or four videos a day because it's my, uh, I never got that's a great. cocaine track, but I do like uh, YouTube. I <laughs> My drug of choice, if you will. Um, and I have a podcast, The Josh Scanlon Podcast is out there as well. My website's Heritage Wealth Planning. But YouTube is where I put everything on just because it's fun. And I, uh, there's always something to talk about. Every day, something new comes down the pike. And so that's where they can find me. So I really appreciate you having me, Daniel. This is fantastic. I look forward to uh, asking you a ton of questions about Medicare as well. Because people, and I just, I know. everyone talks about how confusing Social Security is. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till <laughs> Medicare. My goodness. That's true. Tough. With these got two videos in a row, you've got a financial plan and Medicare. People will be afraid to, to ever retire. <laughs> oh, man. Medicare just it is nuts. And, and real quick, Daniel, I'm telling you, get a freaking broker like Danielle because there's no way. There is no way. Yeah. There's no way that someone, a regular human being, uh, can figure all that stuff out. There's no way that can happen. Mm. I just, I mean, one thing with Social Security is one thing, but when it comes to Medicare, it is ten times more complex. And yeah. sadly, if you make that mistake, it, you could, you might not be able to recoup from it. You know, given uh, pre-existing conditions and whatnot with Medigap. So, do not get a Medicare without seeking assistance. For the love of the good Lord, don't. Do that. <laughs> yep, and we'll be putting out plenty more videos about that here on our own channel. So, uh, thanks so much for chatting with us today. Yeah, I really you know. appreciate it, Josh. And Thank folks, go and me. check out uh, Josh's YouTube channel and. Uh, Thank him for his time. Have a good day. Thanks, Danielle. Bye. So there you have it, folks. We hope you enjoyed this interview and that it gave you some food for thought on retiring to do something that you love. Now that we filmed this video, we're curious to hear whether you plan to start a new part-time or even full-time career after you officially retire from your current job. If so, tell us what you'll be doing. We'd love to hear all about it. Now, if you want to work, but you aren't sure doing what, you can visit our blog post about 50 ingenious ways that you can earn extra money in retirement. I'll drop the link in the description below this video. Lastly, if you want more of Josh, be sure to subscribe to the Heritage Wealth Planning channel here on YouTube. And if you want more Boomer benefits, you can subscribe to our channel using the red button below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.